husband physically restrained at the Dondale Juvenile Centre in the Northern Territory. The very next day, the Prime Minister announced a Royal Commission into the Territory's youth detention system. One person from whom we've never heard is the man who filmed that confronting footage. He was an officer who'd been warning for years that understaffing, poor training and a lack of recreation and rehabilitation programs would bring Dondale to crisis point. Tonight, he speaks exclusively to 7.30. This report from Jane Barden contains language that some viewers may find confronting. Oh, yeah, OK. I don't believe tear gas should have been used. Ian Johns was filming when six teenagers were tear gassed in Dondale's isolation cells in August 2014. <laughs> I still can't understand why, because we had the tactical response group from the big prison, from the prison in, and um, I thought they might have went in through the door, bashed the door and got in. The veteran youth justice officer regrets he didn't push harder to be allowed to talk the boy down. Could have tried though, and there's a couple others that could have tried as well. I think, um, thought we weren't given the opportunity. <laughs> What was that like to witness? Oh, not very nice. You don't want to see any kids, you know, with um, getting their eyes washed out. Yeah, some of them told me in their words they thought they were going to die. In Johns knew the boys had been in isolation for days after an escape from Dondale. None of us said I know they worked. They didn't want, did not want any kids in for a long period of isolation. I'm afraid that wasn't our decision. It was upper management's decision. Well, we all think, think it's ridiculous. I know that a lot of people have painted this as these kids behave because of the facilities and the way that the management and the way they were treated. But we responded to that behaviour, you know, and whether it was right or wrong, we were responding to that, um, to that destructive and disruptive behaviour time and time again. I think the most important thing with dealing with any, any of the kids or young people is to have the communications skills care about the kids and understand the kids because most of these kids we have are from dysfunctional families. Ian Johns has told the Royal Commission he was worn down by upper management, ignoring advice that building rapport was the best way to manage detainees. At the time I know that there was a lot of tr trouble happening so it seemed to be that um, my impression that the muscle was used and um, I don't think muscle helps much at all. Mm. This so-called muscle was in response to a dramatic increase in the number of detainees, many of them with drug and mental health problems. Staff behaviour deteriorated. Who wants, wants to suck my dick? Which one of you boys want to suck my dick? If I had any knowledge or any inkling that was the sort of um, behaviour that would have went on, I wouldn't have accepted it. My own opinion, they didn't have a lot of experience with young young people in detention. In fact, I'm pretty sure they haven't. And um, there's people that have been there for years, and I'm one of them, there's a few others. You know, why didn't they speak to us? We were sort of, sort of left out of the loop because basically they knew better, I suppose. For a system to work, you need more than, uh, and I'll say just with due respect, appropriate infrastructure. You need staff who are trained, competent and experienced to be able to operate within and outside of that infrastructure and to operate appropriately uh, with their client group. Sully Cohen warned against meeting the violent behaviour of the detainees with a more violent response. But evidence presented to the Royal Commission showed her warnings weren't acted on. The corrections boss blamed the direction coming from the minister. Various ministers listen to people in the community and you've got that very strong punitive approach in the community and, and that's, I think, most politicians live in a four-year cycle and, uh, you know, I think by the year two they're thinking about being re-elected re again. In 2015, the Commissioner Ken Middlebrook asked the government for tougher youth detention management tools. 
including two restraint chairs for Dongdale, which were to be called safety chairs. Yes, the restraint chair is not a good, good thing, but um, to, to prevent somebody from self-harming for a period of time till they settle down, um, it's all we really had. Entrance to the Dondale Centre and they get driven straight into the door. Toughening the regime didn't work. Escapes and violence increased. Some staff were sacked or resigned. Others were left dismayed. We were sort of tarred with the same brush, you know, and um, uh, some of the staff were getting very irate phone calls. Uh, stuff like this is happening, um, threats. When the Labour government was elected last year, it banned restraint chairs, recruited more staff and started more programmes. But some programme providers believe change is too slow. It really worries me that we've still got so many kids in the high security unit and many children being held in isolation. Completely unacceptable. We've had some young people at risk so that for um, various reasons they're a risk to themselves or others and so they will be put at risk in a, a, a room away from other young people. Um, it's certainly not isolation, they still engage in education activities. In December, a detainee was hospitalised after this altercation. It's not isolated. Yeah, there would be incidents of young people being restrained, taken out of their cells. We've had a number of um, young people attempt harm, commit assaults spit at youth justice officers. As Ian Johns heads to work, he's determined to be one agent of positive change. With the commission happening, I really believe that there will be change and I think a lot of people I know are very negative about it. I'm pretty positive that the commission will do, there will be something in that report that, that will look, the government will look at and make changes and quickly because we don't want um, any more band-aid treatment, you know. Allegations of abuse in youth detention aren't confined to the Northern Territory. Last year, 7.30 uncovered a string of incidents involving teenagers in a North Queensland facility. Today, an independent inquiry found it was impossible to prove the existence of systemic abuse, given that in some cases it occurred in rooms where CCTV footage wasn't installed, and in other cases, video was deleted after the fact. As Michael Atkin reports, there are concerns that the evidence from juvenile offenders has been kept secret. An unmuzzled guard dog used on a girl in a swimming pool. A boy pinned to the floor and put in hand and ankle cuffs before his clothes are cut off with a knife. With the weight and the force and cuffing a young person to, the, to that extreme, this young boy could have died. These grainy images revealed by 7.30 last year sparked outrage about the treatment of teenagers inside Queensland's Cleveland Youth Detention Centre. To smash him and then turn around and just leave him lay on the ground naked? Like, what is that going to teach him about his self-esteem and the way he feels and his dignity? A young man who'd been in detention gave his own graphic account of being physically abused. But as they got me at the door, they started punching me in the ribs and kneeing me in the head. Then they threw me on the floor and I landed onto my mate's door. The Queensland government moved the next day to set up an independent review into whether the abuse was systemic. Another review was set up after 20 juvenile offenders rioted at Cleveland in November, seriously injuring a guard. This isn't about uh, pointing um, the finger or actually identifying blame. It's about learning. Today, the Attorney General Yvette Darth conceded Queensland's youth detention centres have a lot to learn. I can say today that the government is accepting in full or in principle all 90 recommendations. It's clear that the youth detention system is broken in its current form. While the review was unable to conclude systemic mistreatment, it did find an alarming pattern, including the high number of incidents involving force and mechanical restraints, low number of complaints and the withholding of medication. 
The question is, um, how do we deal with those incidents? Are they properly reported? What sort of oversight body do we need to ensure they're properly investigated? Now, one of the recommendations of the report it was to establish a new independent oversight body. Recommendations are being made around, um, you know, stopping the physical restraint of children unless it's absolutely a last resort, stopping the use of dogs to discipline children, um, stopping the inappropriate use of solitary confinement for children. It's unacceptable that these practices continue. Debbie Kilroy runs support services for women in detention and is deeply concerned by new allegations of abuse. I can only come to the conclusion that there's actually worse abuse going on than what's in the public domain because when you look at recommendation 19, it actually names hog tying. We have not seen any visual in the public domain of children or a child, whether it's one or 10 or 20, being hog tied in a youth detention centre. I'm horrified. The review also found closed circuit TV records at the detention centre were incomplete or not retained. And in one incident revealed by 7.30, the centre was unable to provide an explanation as to why an hour of footage had been deleted. If we don't maintain CCTV footage of abuse that's happening now, how will those young people as adults be able to come and bring um, cases of abuse against the state when they're adults. Young people did give evidence, but their testimony has been withheld, a decision that's drawn intense criticism. Why aren't these children being protected by the state? And why is the state now removing 245 pages of young people's voices that actually clearly informs us all about the abuse it's an extremely comprehensive report, but it was very important to be done in a short time frame because the more time there are people going into these centres um, and talking about these issues, it makes it harder. It gets um, issues happening at the centres and agitates the young people.